Hello, everyone, and welcome hello, to... Hello, everyone. You were just so like, hello, everyone. everyone. Yes, like I was half-heartedly in that. There's a jade next to me, but There the is a jade next to you. <laughs> Now let's try that again. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. There we are. And thank you so much for joining us today. Woo. Girl. Wow. This is so off script. Wow. Anyway, we're going to the writer's class. Wow. Wow. I can't. And I can't even save it. I'm trying to save it. You're trying to save it? Right. So we just wrote books. Okay. <laughs> we wrote some books. Okay. <laughs> There's no saving it. Just the, the life raft has gone by. You, yeah. you were like, okay. yeah. you were like, no, we're full. I'm going down. I'm going down <laughs> bad on this one. We wrote books, and they are, and I thought divorce was bad, and I thought being grown up was easy. If only I me a memoir in verse, foreign wet, foreign, foreign web, well, wow, wow, foreign coffee, widow's web, and widow's debt. Ooh, Ooh, foreign web. That wow. might be my next book, though. <laughs> I see oh, the bubbles. You see the bubbles, don't you? That's how bad I'm failing at this. She sees the bubbles. I'm going under the water on this one. I just bad. It's bad. You can find out everything that your ladies are up to at www.andithoughtladies.com. But you're not here to hear about me. You're we'll here to hear about sink anymore. You just had to rub that Yo, in. Yo, I bit. had to. You already know. You're here to hear about our wonderful guest. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. I'm Haley Soul. Um, and I write steamy, sometimes more than more steamy than not, uh, romantic comedy. More steamy than romantic compass yes okay so i ask <laughs> everybody who writes romantic comedy how do you find the balance between humor and the love story yeah i think i've always gravitated towards reading books that um weren't real heavy on the angst <laughs> for me it's like life is so serious and stressful often anyway that I like to laugh along with um, a romance and then of course I love a romance that's not primarily about the romance so there's always something bigger going on for my main characters and they just happen to meet the one along the way oh so how many this is your first book or how many have you written I heard you said oh. you like to write, and I was like, so there are more than one? I think I have 10 out now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, I feel like I'm doing a good job as a host now. Yeah, I, I think I saved myself. You are great. <laughs> You're coming back. I'm coming back. I'm treading water. About to break I see no bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you've written 10. Yes. How do you find that inspiration to sit down every time, see the blank curve? <laughs> I might be losing you a little bit, but if you can still hear me, um, gosh, the book that we were talking about today, Summer Flame, that's the first in my season's detour series. Um, that one, the inspiration actually came from that old Don Henley song, Boys of Summer just driving home from work and that song is always one that I crank up roll down the window and sing along with um and it made me think back to um my first I guess um summer camping crush pseudo boyfriend if you can call him that and then the story just kind of came from there wow going back to your first crush I find it hard writing all out of life stories like like taking something from life and then putting incorporating it into my fictional world Yes. Um, do you feel that you have to kind of stay true to the facts when you take you take something from life and put in fiction or do you just like I'll just fictionalize the whole thing around it? <laughs> I think kind of the seed for the idea might start there. And then I definitely, um, you know, use the imagination to conjure a different story. OK, I might need to take an advice. I hope you have a, some classes on that. <laughs> if only there were time for that. Um, no, but this book, um, for example, yes, they meet when they're young, I think 10 or 11-ish. And that's when I met that boy at the camp campground. Um, but then they meet again when they're teenagers and then again uh, in their 30s. And those other two meetings definitely didn't happen in real life for me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's got to be amazing. That's like two different stories, right? Story. Two yeah. different set of romantic comedy. How did you stay good in the adolescence heads and then transfer up to like mature those people so far? So the adolescent one is really just kind of, um, I think it's only part of one chapter. So we don't spend a lot of time with them when they're 17. 
Um, it's more just to establish that, okay, this, you know, 10, 10 year old first kiss that was, you know, just a peck and nothing when they're teenagers, there's obviously a lot more chemistry, more hormones going on. Um, and then as adults, it's, it's very surreal kind of to see, to see this person again, you know, the family's always camped at this campground and, and that lake actually Bass Lake in California is a campground where my family has camped for many generations. So the place also had a real special place in my heart too. Oh, that makes it easier to write about when you know that you have like feelings about the place. It's, oh, that's so lovely to bring something like that back to life in your own mind. It really oh. was. Yeah. Different beaches and coves and Angel Falls and places that, you know, I spent growing up in that they're all featured in the book. Um, And then my next to the last question, you know, what three pieces of advice would you give to anyone out there who's starting to write their first book? Well, that's a good one. I've come a long way, I think, um, humbly, she says, uh, from my very first book, which is a different series. Um, and that one I've actually edited, I think, three or four times on a full edit because I could tell um, I could make it better as I was growing. And of course, I've read lots of books about craft. Um, James Scott Bell, um, he's great on on improving craft and um, take off your Pants, I think by Libby. I can't remember her last name. Anyway, just different tips I've read on improving myself as a writer and then applying those, trying to apply at least a few of those lessons I've learned to each new book that I write. I feel like it's just made the whole catalog improve. So wow. that's my big piece of advice is, is don't just write what's in your, your imagination, but also, you know, put a little effort in and work on improving yourself, your craft. So you try to improve on with every book so you do you set a goal of like this is what I'm improving on in this book I find that I reread um, highlighted sections from those craft books that I read um, I reread them pretty frequently and then of course I have a notes page of you know these are the things don't forget to do this don't forget to do that and so each time I sit down sometimes even each day before I sit down to write I'll skim that list and I'll go, oh, that's right. I want to remember to make sure to do this in this book and make sure to to expand on this idea, dive deeper into the backstory. Even if you don't write that, include that in the book, it helps you understand your character better so that they're not, you know, carbon copies of all your previous characters. Love and that. I think it's a, a lot fun of challenge. People always say that like, oh, it seems like I'm reading the same book over and over and over again, but like improving the character will definitely make a whole new story. Yeah. Um, and so my last question, because I did say that was next to the last, and then I asked them, <laughs> let me not lie and, and make that this my last question, which is, um, where can we find out more information about you? And where can we buy these 10 books, people? Because I feel like we need all 10. <laughs> That's very sweet. Thank you. Um, so of course, I sell on Amazon, um, Kindle Unlimited, or um, you know, purchase paperbacks to um, Seasons Detour series. I've got six. The series is now complete. Um, and so it's, um, you know, a book for each season plus two bonus. So um, a winter break and a spring break extra books. Those are all on Amazon. And then my other series, um, if the Silver Falls series, that's just where it's set. Um, that one's also on Amazon. Um, you can check out my website, of course, HaleySoul.com, H-A-Y-L-E-I-G-H-S-O-L.com. Um, but yeah, I think Amazon's the best place to get all the books together. Awesomeness. Thank you so much for taking the time out today because y'all, I was in the doctor's office. So I had, she had to wait a whole 13 minutes for me to get on here to do this podcast. So I, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you, calling me you while you're in the car. <laughs> and, um, Go pick up the new book. And uh, then, you know, after that, you pick up all 10 of hers. You might want like seven more books to read. So you can pick up our seven. And then you can see the rest of our books at www.and.thoughtladies.com. And while you're there, go down to the middle of the page and you can see the charities that we proudly support. We ask that you support them also. It does not necessarily mean by money. You can support them by giving uh, knowledge out of your head because they do need knowledge always. Or you can support them by getting your hands dirty and getting out there in the community and helping them. We thank you in advance for that. And remember that wisdom is always around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys. From Winona. Oh, and guess what? It is now the missing Jade because she went in a store to go shopping. 
Oh, yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>